Welcome to Online Church. Thanks for joining us wherever you are. Maybe you're on your couch, maybe you're uh, in your office. I don't know where you are watching this right now, but I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. I want to give a shout out to our River Church people. If you're with someone and you're a part of the River Church, give them a, uh, uh, actually don't give them like a full on elbow. I don't know what all the rules are, but say, hey, that's you. And uh, maybe you're joining us and you're not normally part of the River Church. You're not normally here uh, when we gather. I want to thank you for tuning in as well. Uh, my, name, my name is Paul Rivard, and uh, I'm excited to share the word that the Lord has put on my heart for us this weekend. And so tune in to what the Lord is going to do. Last week, uh, we talked about God's grace, how Jesus' payment for our sin was enough. You're not making payments on your salvation. You are paid for in full. And His grace is something that we continually discover as we pursue God. We are learning more about His grace more and more in our relationship with God. So that's what we talked about last week. And uh, this week we're going to be talking about Acts chapter 16. Last week when our family, my wife and our two kids, uh, did church Sunday morning, we set up the TV and we got the kids involved. And it was kind of fun because we turned on some worship music and my daughter, she set up kids church. So she got her dolls and her um, different toys and got them all set up and our little guy was kind of joined in with him with her and they had kids church during worship it was so much fun to see them worshiping and playing and engaging with God even while they were playing so I want to encourage you be creative on how you engage with God while we're quarantined and kind of separate and not able to come into the church building and worship together be creative find creative ways to get your kids involved find creative ways to uh, connect with other people uh, we are in this together we are going to get closer to the Lord even as this coronavirus is uh, passing through our nation, we're believing for the Lord's blessing on you, on your family, on this community, and that the Lord is giving wisdom to our leadership as we navigate through this crisis together. And I am thankful for you and for all that the Lord is doing in you and in uh, our city and in whoever is listening to this. I'm grateful. So, Acts chapter 16. We're going to be starting in verses 6 through 10, and we're going to go from there. In we, last week we talked about Paul had just picked up Timothy and had him circumcised, even though they had this huge debate. The chapter before in Acts chapter 15 had him circumcised so that they could minister uh, to the Jews in the temple. And today we're going to be looking at uh, section, another section in verse 6. So, Acts chapter 16 verse 6 says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came down to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia, Macedonia and help us. Verse 10, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So they had a plan. They, in their plan, they were going to go to Asia. They were going to bring the gospel there, which would be modern day Turkey. And that was their plan, but they are interrupted by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit directs them, first blocks them from going basically to the north or south and leads them in a different direction. The Holy Spirit intervenes and Paul has this vision of a man of Macedonia. And he's saying, come over here, help me, is basically what he sees in this vision. And from there they go on and they pass through some cities and they end up in Philippi and they meet a woman named Lydia. They, they're there for several days and then they go to the river, down by the river, to find a place of prayer. And they meet a woman named Lydia. And when they come to Lydia, 
They share the gospel with her. Now, she had already known the Lord, but she had not heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so they're there. So they're already kind of on this detour. They're not 100% sure what the purpose is. They just know this is where God was leading them and that the Holy Spirit had been engaging them with just unctions not to go certain places. And then this vision of the man of Macedonia. So they're on their way and they're in Philippi and they come across Lydia. They preach the gospel to Lydia. They tell Lydia about Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and his payment for her sins and his resurrection. And Lydia receives the Lord and her whole household. And they're all baptized. And so now Lydia in Philippi comes to know Christ as a part of this detour. And so then um, they keep going and along the way they encounter this demon-possessed fortune teller woman. And um, I, that would be, so Paul's going along, and this woman's following Paul around, saying, these are servants of the Most High God. They are telling you the way of salvation. She's even saying something that's true, but it says that she followed them for several days. Paul put up with this for several days. And then finally, he rebukes this woman, the demonic spirit that had control over this woman, and the demon leaves, and now this woman is normal. And she's actually a slave, and so her, the slave owners were upset. They were mad and angry because this woman who could tell fortune and had this demonic influence and ability to influence others by the power of this demon no longer was able to do it. And so the city is upset, and so they beat Paul and Silas and throw them in jail. So now they're in jail. And while they're in jail, they start to praise Paul and Silas. They're in chains. They're locked up. Man, I can't imagine. They're sitting in this place, a part of God's plan, but they're in prison. And they begin to praise and sing songs and hymns to God. And the prison shakes. An earthquake comes and the prison doors are open and the prisoners are set free. The chains fall off of Paul and Silas and they could leave. But as they are moving, the Philippian jailer is ready to take his own life because if he loses these prisoners, it's as good as him. He's as good as dead anyways. And so Paul sees that this Philippian jailer is about to take his own life. And he says, look, we're all still here. He preaches the gospel to the Philippian jailer and the Philippian jailer receives Christ. And so does his household. And so now they're baptized. And so now part of this detour, Lydia becomes a believer and she becomes a faithful partner with the gospel. She hosts the church and she's a mighty woman of God as time goes on in this Philippian jailer. Now, he comes to the Lord and then, so they all stay and then they end up letting Paul and Silas go after that. And Paul says, wait, we're Roman citizens. You're going to let us go in the dark? Shouldn't we stand trial? And so they let them go during the day. And then Paul, go, Paul and Silas go back to Lydia's house and strengthen the believers there and talk to that, the believers there and then they go on their way. That's basically Acts chapter 16. And the reason I kind of walked us through that whole story is because I believe that there's significance in this story. I believe there's a now word in this story. Paul, Paul's plan was to go minister and do something good in Asia, in modern day Turkey, in a certain part a certain region, a certain area, that was his destination plan was to go in this direction. However, God had a different plan. And so my my first kind of point in this text and even in the place we are now as a church community, as believers, as a nation, I want to encourage you, God has a plan. (laughs) Ha ha! God has a plan. Now, it may not be your plan, It may not be the, in your mind, the best plan. I could imagine, like, 
you're trying to preach the gospel and you've got this demon-possessed woman making a scene, I imagine that that would be kind of like, okay, what in the world is going on? It's already been several days. They've been led in a different direction. And then they wind up in prison. They've been beaten. They're going through these trials and tribulations. But in the midst of all of this, God has a plan. And His plan will prevail in your life. I want to encourage you that. But I also need to remind you, because you might say, wait, God's plan was that they'd be beaten and encounter demons and go through all of this? No, that wasn't part of God's plan. You have to remember, God has a plan, you may have a plan, but the devil also has a plan. And so, in this world we will have trouble and, and And there's free will and we live in a fallen world where the effects of sin run rampant in our world. And I believe that's part of what we're seeing with the coronavirus is just part of this fallen world. And I don't believe it's God's plan. He didn't inject the world with the coronavirus. However, in the midst of all of this craziness that we're not used to, God has a plan. His plan will prevail. This didn't take him by surprise. Just like when Paul and Silas and they were doing their thing and they had their idea of what should happen and God led them in a different direction, even though it wasn't all smooth sailing along the way, that didn't negate the fact that God had a plan and that he was with them and that his anointing was with them and that his strength was with them, that his power was with them, that his ability to bring them through was not, that none of that was gone. He had a plan and he was with them. He's got a plan in your life. He's got a plan in this season. There's not a pause on God's willingness to move in our lives. There's not a pause on His desire to see people come to know Jesus Christ. None of this is on pause. God has a plan and it will prevail. I mentioned last week, I believe that in the middle of all of this social distancing and Uh, isolation, if you want to call it that, and we're kind of pulling away from each other, I believe that out of this is going to be the greatest amount of preaching displayed through the internet or sent through the internet onto uh, churches' websites and through YouTube and through all the different avenues that people are using. I believe that that increase is going to, is at a level that the world has never seen. I believe that friends of friends on Facebook. And I want to encourage you to share this message on Facebook. Friends of friends can hear about Jesus that don't normally think about Jesus, that maybe haven't really experienced a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe they've heard. Maybe you. Maybe you're sitting here today. Maybe you're here and one of your friends shared this video on Facebook and you thought you'd check it out. I want to encourage you. God has a plan. He's got a plan in your life. He's faithful. And maybe you're not normally connected with Jesus Christ, but I want to encourage you that He loves you. He he paid the price for your sin. He died on the cross. He's a gracious and merciful God. He died on the cross in your place. When He was on that cross, He bore the weight of your sin, of my sin, of each of our sin on the cross. And when he died on that cross and when he went down into the grave, he took your sin with him. And he went down. He paid the price. His bloodshed was the signature, was was the, the, the finishing work of the payment for your sin was his blood was shed on the cross and then he rose again. And we're, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ soon. Whether we can meet in per- person or not, we're, we'll have to see how that all goes together. But when he rose again to new life, when we receive Jesus Christ by faith and we accept that we, aren't good, we can't be good enough to earn our salvation, we're not, we can't make enough payments to to pay for our sin. But Jesus did it on the cross. Maybe you're listening today and that's you. I want to encourage you to cry out to Jesus right where you are. I feel such a strong sense that there's going to be people who watch this 
who are far from God. Maybe you're someone who knew Christ at one time. Maybe at one point you were close to Jesus and something about the shininess of the world and the draw of whatever, I don't even know. Maybe, there was, maybe there's been hurt in your life. Somehow you wound up distant from God and you're sitting here listening to this right now. I want to encourage you to reach out to Christ, to call upon his name. I want to encourage you who are close to Christ and regularly engaged with him that during this time, God has a plan. His plan will prevail. He's faithful. Seek him out. So the first thing in this story that I want to remind you is God has a plan. The next thing I want to remind you about is that God's plan involves meaningful connections. In this story, as Paul and Silas switch gears, go in a different direction because of God's leading through the Holy Spirit and through a vision, as they take another route, if you notice the wording in verse 8 of the scripture I read in, in Acts chapter 16, it says, So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we, we, it went from them to we. This is very likely when Luke, who is the writer of this book, the book of Acts, this is very likely when Paul encounters Luke. Now we don't know, there's different ideas and theories. We don't know if this is when Luke came to know the Lord or if he already knew the Lord. But this is when we see that Luke ends up on this journey with Paul. He forms this meaningful connection with Luke and Luke is, ends up being a beloved friend of Paul's. Paul refers to him as Luke, the beloved physician. And Luke, who is with me in the gospel. Luke was the one who, when Paul was in, the, in jail in Rome, who, who attended to Paul's needs. And so he, this is where they first encounter on this detour. This detour from Paul's plan to God's plan. I don't know if you've ever been on a detour, but I want to encourage you that God has a plan. And part of his plan is meaningful connections. And we see this in the life of Paul and Silas as he encounters Luke. And then from there, as Luke comes on the journey, he ends up encountering Lydia. And Lydia comes to know Christ and becomes a part of this whole thing and her family as well, and the Philippian jailer, and all these meaningful connections unfold as a result of a detour. I can think of when I was, I went through a program called Teen Challenge. And when I was going through that program, about three and a half months into the program, I felt this stirring, and I felt the Lord I wanted to give back because the Lord had rescued me from so much. I was a meth head, a drug addict, and that was my background. And I got, the Lord got a hold of me and I ended up in Teen Challenge. And about three and a half months into Teen Challenge, I felt this call to give back and I wanted to go into ministry. But I didn't know exactly what that looked like. And so as I started to chart the course and chart the plan according to what I thought would work, I 
kind of assumed like, man, I'm going to go to North Central University. Maybe you've heard of North Central University in Minneapolis and maybe you're listening and you've been through there. Uh, my wife went through North Central University and so my plan was I felt called to ministry so I'm going to go to North Central University. It's just, it's not far from where I went to Teen Challenge in Minneapolis and so that was my plan. As I went through Teen Challenge and got closer to my graduation, it's a 13-month program so I had time to think and pray and I just kind of tucked it away and my assumption was as I got closer I would fill out the application and do everything I needed to do and I would go to North Central. And so along the way, as I'm planning to go to North Central, as I get closer to graduation, I find out about Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge has a ministry school down in Florida. And my plan was to go to North Central. But God's plan was that I would go to Teen Challenge Ministry School. And so I start to sense this shift from my plan to his plan. And as I sense this shift, I come in line with it. I, I sense the Lord saying, no, this is, even though North Central, I, I would have had way more freedom because Teen Challenge is a very structured program. And even their ministry school was a lot more structured than North Central University would, I would add a lot more freedom and at Teen Challenge Ministry School I was still, there was still some more rules and structure that would have not been as, I wouldn't have been as free necessarily um, at, North, uh, at the ministry school as I would have at North Central. And so after 13 months I would have, I, there were, like every part of me thought North Central is the way to go, but there was this drawing by the Spirit to go to the ministry school and I'm so glad that I did. That was God's call on my life as I went down to the ministry school from Minneapolis to Jacksonville, Florida. I went to this ministry school and, as, and from there I went through their ministry school and, and felt a call as I was getting close to the end of that ministry school. Part of the program there is to get involved with the Teen Challenge Center and work at a Teen Challenge Center while doing correspondence classes and I checked out several different ones. And as I was leaving from there, I, I, just as I'm about to make a decision on which one I'm going to go, and Minneapolis wasn't an option. They, didn't, they weren't hiring at the time. And so I'm looking at all these different ones in Florida, and I start to get my heart set on one. And right as I'm about to make a decision to say yes to one of the programs in Vero Beach, Florida, I get a call from one of the leaders in Minneapolis, and they mention we're going to be opening a program in Duluth, Minnesota. How would you like to go up to Duluth, Minnesota and live in the building and start working on the building and when the program's open, you could be on staff at that Teen Challenge Center. And something in me just sparked and I knew it was of the Lord. And so there's these detours and these forks in the roads and sometimes we have our plan, but God has his plan. And I want to encourage you, God has a plan in all of this and his plan involves meaningful connections along the way with all those little detours i got closer i went down to the ministry school with a couple good friends that we stayed connected all the way through we've been close all the way from that point that was 17 years ago i came up here to duluth and this is where i met my wife and she was actually from north central she was going to north central but i met her at a church christmas party here in Duluth, Minnesota, I, in my, if I would have been orchestrating, even if I could have like looked ahead and said, oh, I'm going to marry someone from North Central. I need to go to North Central. I need to figure all this out. But the Lord had his plan. And he brought me through this whole cycle. And all these meaningful connections were made along the way because God has a plan. And his plan involves meaningful connections that are going to matter in the future. He, he desires that we would have authentic relationships with other people and that we would have authentic relationships with other believers, meaningful connections with Him. His plan involves meaningful connections with Him. He desires that we would get to know Him better, just like Paul when he's sensing the Holy Spirit leading him in a different direction and he receives this vision from God. So have some meaningful interactions with God. 
clear some time in your schedule, which may be easier. It may not. Some people are juggling, trying to get their job done while watching their kids and doing all these other things. So it, it may or may not be a time where there's more space uh, on your schedule, but I want to encourage you find some more time to have meaningful interactions with the Lord. Find some time to pick up the phone. Remember when we used to like call on the phone and talk to each other? I've done more of that in the last week or so than I've done in probably months before that, where I actually picked up the phone and talked. Of course, there's texting and messenger and other ways of connecting, but I want to encourage you, pick up the phone and call some people. It takes a little bit of time to talk on the phone and catch up with someone in, the, in this time where we're kind of separate from each other and not able to keep up the normal social dynamic that we've had. But utilize this time to grow in the Lord, grow in your relationships with others and uh, connect. Because God's plan, God has a plan, number one, and his plan may be different than our plan. And he, the devil may have a plan, but God's plan will prevail. And in that plan, he desires that we would have authentic, meaningful connections. Also, God's plan involves gospel expansion. His plan is that the message of Jesus Christ would be brought forth. His plan is that people would hear the good news about Jesus Christ that maybe haven't heard it before, that maybe have heard it before, but need to be reminded of how much Jesus loves them, of how good he is, of his grace, that he, our sins are forgiven because of the sacrifice that Jesus paid on the cross. His plan involves gospel expansion, just like in this story that we're looking at in Acts chapter 16. If you notice, as they go on this detour, this is the fertile ground that the Philippian church is born out of this detour. Between Lydia and the Philippian jailer and their families, from there, there a church is formed and they're the strongest partner church that Paul has out of all the churches that support Paul. He, he says that even when no one else was partnered with them, with him and, and those who he was preaching the gospel with in Philippians, they stayed faithful in their partnership. And so out of this detour, people come to know Christ, meaningful connections happen, and the gospel goes where it had not gone before. And so I want to encourage you, God has a plan. His plan involves meaningful connections and it involves gospel expansion. Not only did the Philippian church come out of this detour, so did the church in Thessalonica and in Corinth. Some strong churches that were pillar churches were formed out of this detour. I know sometimes it can feel like when we're on it, what feels like a detour, when we had a specific plan. I know our church in this time with social distancing in place and everything else, we were, if you're a part of our church, you know that God has been on the move. His Holy Spirit has been just so sweet in our services. We've been gaining ground uh, when we attacked this debtless campaign initiative. And man, we made headway there. We paid off over half of the debt because of your faithfulness and generosity. And God has been doing good things and leaders have been raised up and God is just bringing things together. And then this feels like a detour. And, and I, like I said, I don't believe the coronavirus is God's plan, but I believe that he has a plan in the midst of all of this for our families, for our church, for the churches all over this nation. I truly believe he has a plan. And I, I don't know about you, but I have found that when I submit myself to his plan and I trust him, things will work out. And they go better than if I had the ability to orchestrate and finesse and manipulate everything how I think it should be. And so the gospel is going forward as a result of this online. Meaningful connections can happen if we'll take time to make them happen and we can trust and be at peace and be of good cheer, like Jesus said, because 
He has a plan. I want to just give a few thoughts on how to align ourselves with his plan. Number one, listen for God's direction. Did you notice that the Spirit kept them from going to Asia and the Spirit of Jesus, what's the wording, would not allow them to go to Bethania? They were sensing the Lord. The Spirit of God doesn't just pull us down and strangle us. No, you're not going here. You're not going there. He speaks to us in our inner man. Sometimes it's just a still small voice. Sometimes it's you sense God's presence and there's something very evident. But he will speak to you. So listen for God's direction. I wouldn't be shocked if in the next several weeks that when we listen, that some really cool encounters with God could come out of it. Maybe even a whole life direction forms out of this where God shifts our path for some of us. I, w- I wouldn't be shocked. Nothing would shock me as far as what God can do in the midst of this time when we have uh, a little bit different track going on than what we're used to. So listen, number one, listen for God's plan. Number two, invest in meaningful connections. That's how we align ourselves. The Lord has a way of working through relationships and through connections with other people. And so I want to encourage you, invest in meaningful connections. Like I mentioned, yes, we can't necessarily all gather in some kind of a church service or a building or whatever, but you can still reach out. You can still connect. You can still messenger. You can still call. You can still make a touch point with someone you haven't talked to for a long time. Maybe God will put someone on your heart to pray for and to reach out to. But I want to encourage you, invest in meaningful connections. And of course, think about that as a pattern of your life. Maybe you've been isolated before this. Maybe your normal pattern is to be fairly reclusive. And maybe now, like, this has all got you thinking. And I want to encourage you to reach out and then even beyond once life goes back to normal. And it will come back. We will be back in motion. We will be gathering. And, and we'll, we'll be back in, uh, in motion before too long. So maybe your normal pattern of life is one of isolation. And you've experienced anxiety and depression or whatever. I want to encourage you to step out of that even now by connecting with others with the resources available right now and then envision yourself getting more connected in meaningful relationships as time unfolds the rest of this year. Because this is a time where we can reevaluate and rethink, Lord, how am I doing my life? I want you to guide me and lead me. So listen for God's direction. Invest in meaningful connections and be a part, number three, be a part of gospel expansion. Be a part of ensuring that the gospel is being preached. Share the good news with someone. Maybe, maybe you have relatives or friends and where this coronavirus is scaring people. Maybe there's people who are really in the higher risk category that you know that don't know Jesus Christ, that have not received his saving grace, the forgiveness of sin, who haven't welcomed Jesus in to their lives. I want to encourage you, share the good news, the message of Jesus. Share the love of Jesus. Be part of gospel expansion. Share it with people that you know. Share this on Facebook. Share this in Messenger. Like Send this out and also open your mouth and share the good news and offer prayer to those that you're connected with, even if maybe they don't even know Jesus. Share the good news. And continue to live the good news. Live it out. Be a witness. Be sacrificial in this time. Serve your family. Serve your friends. In, in the capacity that we can right now, but like reach out and endeavor to be a servant. So share the good news, live the good news, and continue to be generous in your giving so that the gospel continue, can continue to be preached. Be generous towards your local church. If, this is part, if you're a part of the River Church, continue to give and be generous. And if you, we totally understand if, if you're 
work is affected, if your income is affected and all that, you got to work around that. But I want to encourage you to give online. Uh, you can give online. You can send uh, offerings in the mail. You can still give and, and ensure that the gospel is going forth. You can still put those, that seed in the ground and believe for a harvest in your life that God would bring blessing on your finances. So I want to encourage you, share the good news. Tell someone about Jesus. Offer prayer. Tell them about Jesus. Live the good news and continue to give and be generous so that the good news can be preached and go forth in this city and beyond because God is good. His message is really worth investing in and protecting and ensuring his plan is above all this noise right now. His plan continues. I'm so encouraged because the gospel has lived through and thrived through every war, every famine, every plague, every virus, every division, every single thing that this world has been through, the gospel has thrived and the people of God have thrived and, the, and more people have come to know Jesus in, in the middle of all of that. And often when times are uncertain or more turbulent, that's a time even more so when people are willing to reach out to God and give their hearts to Him because they know, man, I need someone beyond me. There's something beyond all this that I see. So I'm encouraged in this time. I know that God is on the move. He has a plan. And I want to encourage you. That was the word on my heart today that I wanted to share with you. He has a plan. Have those meaningful connections. The gospel will expand and be a part of that. And so I want to thank you for joining in. I just want to take a second. If you're here today and you're listening to this message and you've never invited Jesus in as Lord of your life, you've never actually surrendered your heart to him. You've never said, Lord, my plan is not working. I want to come in line with your plan. I want to take the first step. I want to place my faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to confess him as Lord and Savior today. If you're with me and that's what you're saying, that's me, I want to, I want to take that step. You, right, wherever you are right now, maybe you're in your living room, maybe you're in your bedroom, maybe you're, I don't know where you, you are right now. But wherever you are, you can turn your life over to Jesus Christ. You can call on his name. So if that's you, I'm going to ask you to pray with me. This prayer is not magical. This prayer doesn't seal the deal, so to speak. It's just a way of inviting Jesus into your life. And now, as you invite him by faith and receive forgiveness of sins and receive Jesus as Lord of your life, you confess him with your mouth and believe that he is Lord, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10. As you believe in and confess he, you will be saved. And so I'm going to encourage you to reach out to him. So pray with me and invite him in your heart if that's you. Say, Heavenly Father. Yep, pray right where you are. Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner. I've sinned against you. Father, I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. Lord, that you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross in my place. Jesus, come into my life. I confess you as Lord and Savior. Teach me how to follow you. Teach me how to love you. All the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you did that for the first time, or maybe you felt like, hey, I've received Christ before, but you just felt like you should pray that prayer, and you wanted to rededicate and reconnect with Christ, if you did that, I want to encourage you to reach out to us, messenger us on Facebook, or send us an email at uh, office at 
Dot org. You can send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Or maybe, maybe you didn't pray that prayer, but the Lord spoke to you in some unique way through this message. We'd love to hear from you. Send us a message in our messenger box. Send us an email. Uh, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you and uh, hear how the Lord has spoken to you through this message. We're so grateful uh, that you spent some time with us, and we'll see you before too long. God bless you. <laughs>